Hey there! Happy Chinese New Year! How are you? Are you ready for the weekend? Are you ready for this new year? This is the year of the Earth Dog, according to Chinese astrology. So, I wonder, what's on tap for you? Have you been looking at what all of this symbology means? Well, I'd like to talk to you about that because this could be quite a big, momentous year for you and for many of us in our tribe. Hello, Romeo. It's so good to, to be connected with everyone here. This is a topic that I'm super excited about. I don't know if you've heard me talking about uh, this webinar that my friend Nick Haynes from the Five Institute, he does it every year. And um, he explains what the Chinese symbology and the Chinese astrology means year by year so that you can plan to have the best year possible, um, to know what might come up for you depending on your energy type, depending on your um, Chinese astrology type. And he did this uh, masterclass webinar thing for us again this week. Um, I will put a link so that if you missed it, you can listen to it. Um, because I will tell you, for the last, I don't know, well definitely, <laughs> Last year, February marked a ginormous change in my life and my business. And there were some changes going on that I didn't understand. And Nick totally put it into context. So if you know that there are some changes that need to take place, maybe you've been resisting them, maybe you've been fighting them, maybe you've been welcoming them, but you feel a little overwhelmed, then I want to talk to you about something juicy today. If that's you or anybody you know who might be feeling a calling to do something different with their life, please share this video with them or chime in in the comments, okay? So what is up, birthday girl, Janet Anthony? How are you? And thank you for the Happy New Year, Romeo. Romeo Cornal and Janet Anthony, they are two of the contributing authors to a new book called Time to Rise. So big ups to the both of you. <clears throat> Let me just get some tea. <clears throat> I have been <clears throat> traveling as usual all around the world. Just got back here to the south of France and uh, many of you may have heard that I got sick when I was in the United States. People are always asking me like, how is it that you do so much and you never get run down? Well, it finally got me. Being in the United States, <clears throat> leaving the south of France where it's, okay, it's not hot, but it's been pretty warm. Then I got to Richmond, Virginia, and we had a major cold snap. I mean, it was freezing. And then there were people with the flu. So Janet, I really want to sing happy birthday to you. That's why I'm getting my tea. Got my little agave here and let me take a sip. And you know what, Janet, because you won't be able to critique my, my singing, I'm going to sing it to you in French. How about that? Joyeux anniversaire, mes voeux les plus sincères, que ces quelques fleurs je vous porte du bonheur, que l'année entière tu sois douce et légère, et que l'infini nous soyons tous réunis. Pour chanter en coeur, bon anniversaire. Happy birthday to you, my dear friend, my colleague, Janet Anthony. Happy birthday. So how auspicious for you, Janet, to have your birthday during this celebration of spring for, for the Chinese. Chinese New Year. This is the year of the Earth Dog. So um, anyone who's been reading my book, I Love You Me, or even um, the orgasm prescription before that, you know that I recommend that you find out which of the five Chinese elements is your dominant influence. You just go to the vitalitytest.com. It's totally free. And Nick and his people have put together a really wonderful way for you to get insight into what makes you naturally brilliant 
And you are. You are naturally brilliant. Right, Janet? Don't you remember me saying that to you? It was so heartwarming because <clears throat> in this community, we basically just are a mirror to one another, <laughs> which can be good and bad, but we basically reflect back what we see. The, um, you know, Romeo and I were talking this afternoon uh, about being able to see people's potential. And I could see Janet's potential when I met with her on Skype uh, last year. And you remember me telling you, Janet, about the brilliance that I saw in you? Like we all have this natural brilliance. And unfortunately, sometimes our childhood or sometimes just life experience kind of tries to beat it out of us so that we doubt that we're unique, that we're special, that we have something to give. But we are all part of this interconnected uh, organism of life on the planet. Each of us has an important role to play. And so the reason I'm so passionate about helping you liberate your authentic self is because I know that when you're trying to be a copycat or trying to fit into anyone else's box or paradigm, then you're not going to give your soul the best opportunity to be fully expressed. And in my case, trying to do that, trying to live up to everyone else's expectations, um, trying to fit into these little molds that society pre-baked, um, it led to, to my depression. And it led to me feeling like I didn't want to be on the planet anymore. Um, so it's, it's, it's an existential question at the end of the day. You know, who are you being? Are you being your authentic self or some version of you that you've taken on maybe because you had to just to survive? But there comes a moment when you're gonna be called to really step up and, and sometimes grow. Um, it's not just stepping up into, you know, what's comfortable. We are often called to step up and beyond even what we think we're capable of. And so Janet and Romeo both know that I teach a course called Stories with Soul. It's a life writing course where we help people really look at their life as a timeline of events and to identify sp specific turning points that may have impacted us for better or for worse. They've shaped us, they've molded us. And if you're someone who wants to write, you know, whether it's creative writing for fiction or nonfiction, your book, your memoir, or in a collective book like we've done, it's really great, this course, because we use Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. And if you've ever heard of it, then you know that all of the great novels and all of these great Hollywood films, um, they generally follow a very common format. And <clears throat> what I want to zero in on today is the call. So typically when you look at your life and you consider that maybe, just maybe, you're ready to look at yourself as the hero of your life's journey, which means letting go of the victim mentality. Life ain't happening to you, it's happening for you. And if you're willing to say, how can I step up uh, and be more of the hero, then I want to, you know, explore, okay? Hi, Crystal. Hello, Faida. Lovely to see you as well. I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> Please forgive me if I have to drink a little tea. Because as soon as I got back from my trip to the United States, where I got <coughs> a little bronchitis, finally got that all healed. And then I land here where everything is starting to bloom, starting off with the mimosas. And uh, that typically kicks off allergy season. So um, Romeo, who is an intuitive life coach and does all sorts of healing, um, I think if, we, if you really put all, all of the things you do, Romeo, on your website, it'd just be long, long, long. But we explored some healing remedies today for allergies, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. But for now, I'm sipping some tea. 
So here's the thing. In the, the Joseph Campbell um, uh, Hero with a Thousand Faces, the original book where he explained that we're all on this heroic life journey, we as the hero of our life story will typically be going along and life can either be great or not so great. We call that the status quo when we, when we start teaching the writing course. So you're in your status quo. Life is just life, whatever it is. But there's this feeling. Maybe it's kind of a, an urge, a sense that it's time for a change. There's something calling to you. And whether it's, you know, time for you to start doing something new in your business, in your relationship, in your body, there's just this sense, there's this calling that it's time for you to embark on some sort of adventure. Now, if you look at like Star Wars or, you know, even looking at like um, all of the Disney movies, there's always this sense of a call to adventure. Hey, Carol, good to see you as well, one of our Time to Rise authors. Samuel, good to have you here as well. And Shelly, so excited to start working on your book. So <clears throat> as we look at this sense that there's, there's something calling to us, and generally when you look at a heroic story, it's all about the call to adventure where our heroes kind of living life and then suddenly they want to go on some journey or they want to go off and look for some treasure. In your life, it could be you're being called to finally write that book or to finally go and get that TED talk or to finally go and get that degree or start a company or whatever it is, some personal development, you know, kind of thing that you're feeling like, I just got to I got to change. I got to do something to better myself or better my situation. Now, typically, in most good books and most good blockbuster movies, the hero gets the call, but they don't go right away, right? None of us tend to just jump up and say, I'm ready. Let me go take up my sword and go charging off and ready to fight dragons and most of us experience what Joseph Campbell called the refusal. The refusal of the call. Has anybody experienced that? And it can come up in different ways. So maybe you've been having this urge. People are telling you, girl, you should write a book. Or wow, has anybody ever told you, you know, your life is like better than fiction. You should write a book. And you kind of feel it. You're hearing it from multiple angles. Maybe you even wake up with an idea or a dream, but then something comes up and you're like, no, 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 me, no. Who am I to write? No, 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 I'm not a writer. No, no, no. Like we say no in all these different ways. We refuse the call. So you're being called to this heroic journey. You know, I had somebody that I was working with who said she really felt called to become like a motivational speaker. She's like, where's that coming from? She was like, it's not, she's like, I got a college degree. I've worked in corporate. Where is this coming from to be all of a sudden? And I said, well, you could look at this from a couple of different perspectives, but I'll ask you first, for those of you who have felt called to do something, where's that call coming from? What about you, Sarah? Sarah Kate Brandis. Any calls out there? Where do you guys think the call comes from? Who is doing the calling? Who's, who in the universe is like setting up all these little things that start to put um, opportunities in your path? Anyone? Anyone have an opinion on it? Come on now, don't, don't y'all be silent. Look, I haven't been here in forever. God, thank you, Crystal. You think it comes from God? Anyone else? What else do you think? Where, who's doing the calling? <clears throat> Silence, crickets. <sighs> um, I believe it is 
Okay, there you go. Sarah says, from her soul via an existential crisis. Yes, I think it is from God, the divine, our soul, our higher self. There's that, that part of us that is beyond the egoic. Yes, Carol, the spirit or universe, like that call comes through us. Shelley says her calling is divinely inspired. You prayed for clarity and the answer never wavered. So I do believe that the call that comes to us for our lives comes from a divine place. Whether that's your, sp your, your soul, higher self, spirit, God, universe, whatever it is, I do believe it's divine. And sometimes it is scary to think, whoa, wait, I'm going to leave everything that was comfortable and known to me for the unknown, where I might face dragons, I might face death, you know? It can be incredibly scary. <clears throat> and we may feel that we're not equipped, that we're too small, too puny, too weak, too old, too, I mean, too, 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 right? And that's just the egoic mind that comes up with all these excuses because yeah, it's scary. We're gonna put ourselves out on the line. So, sometimes we have that call, that feeling, that nudge, that tingle that says, I, I gotta do this, but then we refuse it. Now you may refuse it one time or several times until you reach this point where you re recognize that this is beyond me. Either something is so dire that you have to act. For many people, they tell me they became entrepreneurs, even though they had this niggling little feeling that they should have started their business years ago, then, oh, it's a layoff or something else that forces them to finally say, okay, I'm gonna answer the call now. And for some of us, yes, it's an existential crisis that makes us finally say yes. Um, for some of us, it's just recognizing so many signs where we finally get the confidence to say, okay, if I'm getting all these signs from all these places, it must be real, it must be true. And for some of us, we get to a point where we've had enough experience that we feel like, okay, I may fail, but I might actually succeed. And so we finally say, yes, we answer the call, which in any great story, in any great film or play, that's like this, this change in the whole pace of the film or the, or the story, because then we're crossing over into the unknown. So anybody there right now? Anybody feeling like you've answered the call and you're like, okay, now what? And you're stepping into the unknown? Anyone? 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 I um, I think sh before you you arrived, Shelley, I I sang a little happy birthday song to my friend Janet. Janet was um, one of the final people who the Lord sent to me as part of my call. Um, I have said for many years that I'm not a therapist. I don't really want to be anyone's life coach. You know, I, I had a long list of things that I'm not or that I don't do or I won't do. And there have been a few times when I have been called. And I mean, this, these have been going on for years, not even just like recent. Like I can now with hindsight being 2020, I can look back over my life and go, oh dang, look at all these times that spirit or whatever was showing me, come on girlfriend, this is your real calling. And you know how we are, we're like, no, 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 I'm gonna go do this. Oh no, wait, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go down this path. And I wear many hats, but one of the things that um, I think has been true throughout my life 
is one being a teacher and the second being a healer. And for a long time, I don't even know if I like the word healer because it sounds whatever. I'm not even going to attach anything to it. But this idea about being sort of a therapist or a spiritual teacher or a healer, somebody used the word guru and that just made me want to throw up. <laughs> so there have been lots of these little hints about um, where I might be going, but I refused, refused, repeatedly refused the call. And <clears throat> Janet was asking me something last year, and I was like, no, 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 I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm not doing any therapy. I don't want to fix this, that, or the other with my peoples. I don't want to sit down and hear about long, drawn-out stuff. I refused. But what I did feel comfortable doing is teaching and healing through teaching and through experiential um, experiences. So you, you've probably seen I host retreats all around the world. Um, <clears throat> I like the idea of people getting out of their comfort zone. I mean, it's a total hero's journey, right? You get the call, you leave your comfort zone, you step into the unknown where you get to experience and gather new tools and generally in a hero's journey, there's a mentor, there's some wise figure, you know, whether that's a Yoda type or in the Matrix it was the Oracle, there's generally some wise figure that you meet along your journey who's going to help you get ready to fight that dragon or whatever it is you need to do. And <clears throat> What I recognized last year is <coughs> in all of the, uh, the retreats and workshops, even though these, um, many of the retreats were geared towards a business audience, so people who are coaches, I mean spiritually heart-centered coaches and mentors and light workers who want to take their business into the global space or they want to start um, you know, podcasting, blogging, vlogging, doing TED Talks, doing radio, whatever it is. They want to really get their message out there. But there's a spiritual component to stepping out on a national scene and taking your knowledge, even if it is sort of book learning, taking it to a level where you're really interacting with people um, at the heart and the soul level, really requires that you know yourself and you dig into your own psyche so that you're never projecting onto your clients. You can really fully be present when you're on stage or on TV. And certainly if you ever get to the point where you want to be like a, a mega star, you got to really maintain your spiritual core and, and your values so that you don't get caught up in the woo-woo-la-la, you know, fairy tale land of show business. <clears throat> but what was interesting to find out last year and it happened a few times, at the end of many of the workshops um, and speaking engagements, so just being on stage, not necessarily leading a workshop, but doing a speaking engagement where I do a, like a keynote speech, for example, I was getting people come to me and say they were transformed and people with tears in their eyes after a personal branding uh, talk that I gave. And I was like, that's weird. How are you being so moved when this is like a businessy thing? But then I recognized that when you are something, a healer or a transformational teacher, sometimes it's not the content of the words you speak. It's your essence, your vibe, your intention, because always my intention is to heal. And <clears throat> it happened with you, dear Ja Dr. Janet Anthony and a few other people after a couple of these retreats and workshops where as I was reflecting on the feedback and reflecting on how some people had truly transformed you know now we're really getting better about taking pictures of people at the beginning of our workshops and at the end because people transform like you wouldn't imagine necessarily that at a writer's workshop or a speaker's workshop that you were gonna like transform and heal stuff. You know, if you've ever had a fear of, of judgment with your writing or a fear of public speaking, where do you think that comes from? Like, you didn't have it as a baby. 
Babies pop out of the womb like, see me, hear me. <laughs> I'm going to speak. We acquire those um, fears. And <clears throat> sometimes we acquire the a fear of, of being seen, a fear of being heard. Uh, we acquire this fear of judgment based on traumatic experiences, whether in this lifetime or in another lifetime. And so it was quite amazing to me to look at the feedback consistently over the last couple of years. And it was like, oh my goodness. I didn't advertise that this was a healing workshop, didn't advertise that it was a transformational workshop. And yet, that's what people were experiencing. Hey Maureen, it's good to have you here too. It has been a while. It's been a while for me because <clears throat> I've been traveling, I've been sick, coughing up a lung. So Shelly says, you prayed for a layoff so that you could move into your assignment this year. And two to three weeks later, your company announced that they were going to do it. Awesome. So who manifested that? Was it you? Was it the divine? It's kind of like, um, I don't know if you saw the interview that I did <clears throat> with Gita Vinter, who talked about, you know, she had this feeling um, of wanting to move abroad and manifested it um, <clears throat> through her, her husband's job reassignment, if you can imagine that. So, you know, my battery's low, <laughs> figures. We, we have the power to, to manifest things. Um, and so you have to start to wonder, did I do that? Or was it just my willingness to say yes to my assignment? Yes to the calling that has finally allowed everything to flow so that I could fulfill my destiny. So in my own experience, I resisted it and resisted it and resisted it. And as I said, last year, I kind of looked at, I didn't really look at myself, but I looked at myself and said, oh my goodness, I'm a therapist. I'm a transformational teacher. I'm like, I'm doing what comes naturally, even though I never set out to be these things. And in fact, uh-oh, I'm gonna have to hold this. And in fact, I out and out said no. I tried to refuse the call. And lo and behold, here I am, doing my thing. So I wonder how many of, of you may have experienced this as well. And <clears throat> the reason that I think this is an important uh, thing for us to, to discuss, uh, besides the fact that I'm, I've been researching and reviewing my notes because I'm starting to teach um, this course again, I am teaching the uh, stories